Hello, in this video I'll show you how to use the IMAP to retrieve uh, messages, that is the emails from your mailbox, uh, find the folders, retrieve the messages and then read the body of the message and some of the other parts of the message. Uh, we are using WPF in this case, if you don't know WPF there's nothing to be worried about, I'm just going to show you the main C sharp components of this arrangement and you'll be able to use it any way you want, say server side blazer or something else. Uh, now, in the WPF, we have a very simple arrangement. These are the folders. You have to retrieve the folders, and in the folders, you'll find the emails, okay? So let's double click on the inbox, and we get the emails, okay? We get a few emails. Now, if I double click on that, we'll get into, the, uh, into another method where we will be reading the email. So this is ba the basic idea, right? We have three methods. Uh, one retrieves uh, the messages, the other folders, and then the final one reads uh, the whole message right uh, the body of the message uh, let's start with the retrieval of the folders we have to use the imap client okay let's see where it comes from it comes from the mail kit mail kit mail kit dot net dot imap this is what you need to include and you can find mail kit in the NuGet, just a simple search and you'll be able to download it. Uh, it works very well, there's nothing to be worried about. So we have this client, now you don't have to use the using statement but uh, uh, this is kind of what they go with so I thought I would uh, follow uh, the sort of main documentation a bit more closely. Uh, so we have that, we have a client which is the IMAP client and then we need to connect to a client. Okay, we need to connect to the client. We have, first of all, the domain for the main name, right? You can find uh, this whole arrangement in your mail email service provider. Okay, we have that, then we have a port, uh, then we have uh, use SSL, if you can see this properly, the third one is use SSL which may be needed to be set to true and may not be needed to be set to true depending again on your settings the port may be different uh, the host right here the domain name right here that may be different all these things may be different so you have to search for your particular provider what they say and this can be quite tricky to actually connect uh, some providers give you one piece of information but then it doesn't work you play around with the settings set some default ports different default ports and it works so it can be quite troublesome but it will work in the end now after that once we connect we need to authenticate with that account from which you want to retrieve the data the folders the emails and all the rest okay so we need the email address we need the email address and the password for the email address now your username might be something else so it may not necessarily be an email address again it depends on the provider so do be careful about these things and again it can be it can become quite a headache but what can you do right you have to enter the username this is the username in this case an email address in most cases it will be and then the password for that user that's it now to get the folders we need to use get folder async from the client get folder async and most of these will have a non-async version which can be quite useful in some cases so, so we get this list of folders i list in this case i mail folder we get this list and then you need to provide the namespace but as you can see you basically leave uh, everything blank right you leave everything blank and it will retrieve all the folders as you have seen now these settings may be different for some other providers but they shouldn't really be so uh, if it doesn't work uh, search around maybe in your providers forums because again this is not specific uh, to every general case okay some things may be different depending on your provider depending on what you have exactly so uh, if it doesn't work uh, see that everything is done correctly but then go to your provider and see what they tell you see what they offer what they have and all that stuff uh, now to read the folders to read the folders you need to do a for each loop or just uh, loop in some other way through the folders list okay and the folders will offer some data about them now we are using and adding to the list the full name we're using the full name we're adding to the list you saw the list uh, on which i double click later but then you see you have uh, all these different uh, arrangements as well okay 
all these different arrangements. So now we see close and you see open. I'll show you close and open later. We're just retrieving the name, so we don't need to either open or close it, uh, but we all need that later. And you get the count just like normal list, and I get all these different things. Now, if this video is quite successful, if people are interested, I will make uh, perhaps more of a series about this IMAP arrangement because there are many different things, such as setting flags and all those things. So we see what happens, but I will probably be making a few more videos related to uh, this uh, email thing. Now, the final uh, thing is disconnecting. The true is set to disconnect as a logout. So it's sort of perfect disconnection from that arrangement. You log in and you log out. You log in, do your stuff, and then log out. Uh, so this is how you retrieve the folders, just the names. And the names will be enough to sort of reference to them. That will be enough in terms of the folders. It will, however, not be enough for the actual email. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later. But the next method is retrieve messages. And once again, we go through the same setup. We retrieve a client, uh, and then we connect and we authenticate. Kind of the same thing. Now you could have a different arrangement. You can make this more global. You can use and reuse rather the connection. You can do all those different things. It's up to you. I would not recommend to keep the connection for too long because it may break and then you need to actually uh, handle the sort of broken connection. And as you can see, there are methods for that. Uh, you see, we have the connected method. Uh, and uh, disconnected if i can show you right here we have a disconnected so you can add all these handlers for all these different things but if you just connect do your work disconnect right away it will be perfectly fine you won't have to deal with that so it all depends on how much time you want to spend although again if you put all those handlers that will look better to the end user that may be better okay so let's move on we have the authentication and then we get to the folder now for the folder, if you're interested in WPF, this is how we retrieve uh, uh, the list box item. And if you want to learn more about this stuff, take a look at my course or my book. They are pretty much the same. So if you prefer reading, take a look at the book. If you prefer watching and doing some exercising and maybe submitting the exercises to, for my review, uh, take a look at my course. Uh, you can do all those things. Uh, so again, we just cast the sender, the object from the clicker. Uh, uh, and then we take the selected item and when we put it into the string because the f the name that is displayed that is the folder name the folder does exist so we just have to provide the name and retrieve the folder and we have our folder i mail folder as you have seen previously now the difference here is that we have to open the folder we have the folder but we won't actually be able to read it until we open it basically we retrieve the messages right uh, if we don't open it it's just sort of static kind of a thing it doesn't have anything in it well once we connect once i rather open it we get all the messages and then we can read and write or read only i'm talking about read only in this case therefore i'm setting read only but it also has read and write privileges as well now for the email list i have an email list the reason in this case i have an email list is because i will need some way to display the message subject and the id but the ID needs to be hidden somewhere, okay? So that on the click, the ID goes through into the method and the displayed part will be the subject, okay? The subject is what gets displayed. So we just have a list, okay? We have this uh, sort of class model right here. The first one is ID, string ID, and then we have string subject. A couple of strings just like that, okay? just get back to that and then we loop through the items in a folder you see how we loop through a folder i don't mess with any of the sort of folder features and as you can see there are many we have fetch sync we have search sync uh, many different things so it does have properties it's not uh, just some pointless list but if i just loop through the folder like this i get my items just like that, I can access the message ID and I can access the subject. And as you have seen, it does indeed work. So it's all very simple in this arrangement. And then for the WPF part, just quickly, we need to add uh, the item source that will be the email list, but as a 
enumerable, right? Has an enumerable. Uh, so that's added. And then if we go quickly to the XAML, you see we have this list box uh, messages. And then we have that and that and that. And then you see right here we have display member path. And then we have subject. Now remember the subject is in that class model. It's the property of that. So that is what gets displayed. Basically, you just sort of declare which, which property of a class model will be displayed as the, well, as the display member rather. And then we have the item source binding you just set that and you're good to go and then selected value path id so this is what basically goes through on the click the selected item as you have seen in the previous option that will be in this case the id it won't give you the subject it will give you the id that's all we need to know on this one and let's just go and save just quickly okay and then Finally, we have a read message. We also disconnect as usual, but then we have read message, which this is where we read the message. We have a client, okay, client. We have connection, we have authentication, and then we need to get the message ID. This is how you get it from the WPF. You see, we get the selected item, and then we take the ID. We take the ID from the selected item. Kind of a difficult uh, thing, lots of casting, but it does work, as you have seen somewhat at least for now. Okay. And then we have get folder. We need to once again get the folder. We get that from the previous selection, right? We get the folder. And then we open a sync. Once again, we need to open the folder because we need to read it. And then the folder, we need to read that one specific message. We need to retrieve it. So what I simply do, I get to the folder. I use first, okay, and then message where it is equal to the message ID. We will get that message. Now at this point, okay, I can launch the application and I'll actually uh, get to the breakpoint. I'll show you what happens. There are two types of emails, as you may know, two types of emails, the HTML and text. Okay. Let's click on that. Let's go to the inbox. Let's go to the inbox. Let's go to this uh, little email right hand. We have a breakpoint. We have a breakpoint after the message. Okay. And as you can see, it gives us a, a little warning to not use string to serialize the messages. And more importantly, it gives us a whole lot of data. It gives us from, from whom it came, right? And a bunch of headers. You go into the results view to find them. As you can see, just a bunch of headers. And then the ID, you saw the ID previously. Okay. And lots of different things. And as you can see, we get the subject. You saw the subject already. And then we have the text body. Now, let me explain the body. There are two types of body, right? The text body and then the HTML body. But you never really know which one it is. And we don't have a kind of a toggle, a Boolean thing to handle that. So what you simply can do, you can check if one of them is null. In this case, if HTML body is null, okay, is not null rather, then we go and take and use the HTML body. If, however, it is null, we just use the text body. So as you can see, this worked out quite well. I'm just going to do the HTML visualizer. As you can see, it looks good and perfectly fine. So this is how you retrieve those messages. This is how you access them. The source code is in the Patreon. You can take that, download that, and you also get some free courses. One free course for the first tier, just $1 and then more courses for the other tiers. Do check that out and do subscribe to this channel for perhaps more such IMAP videos.